you know what we try to do? You're going to see Gideon try to do the same thing. We want to take everybody with us because we don't want to leave anybody behind. And here's the thing is this. You can't take people with you until you've made a land for them to come. Yes. Let me say that again because that was prophetic. You can't take people with you until you've made a land for them to come. That means you got to pray there and you got to go there before they reach there. Yes, yes. Amen? Yes, yes. You got to experience And here's what scares us. Sometimes by yourself. Yes. Got to pioneer. Pioneer. There's a people that God's called you to. You know, one thing I find is, you know, something about us, we don't like to get with people that are going to raise us to another level. We like to be with people that are on the same level as we are. That's good. It's dangerous. I don't know about you. When I got saved, it was something in me. If I saw somebody that prayed harder than me, they could have a totally diff different background than me. I wanted to be with them because I wanted to learn how to pray. If I saw somebody that was more fervent in the Word than me, I wanted to be around them because I wanted to get fervent in the Word. Are you with me? Yes. If I, I didn't want to just be with people that just were like carnal like me. I wanted to be with people that were higher than me because I wanted to get better. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So, got, you know, you have to determine that. So you're going to see this with Midian. Okay. I mean, with, um, with my man Gideon. Now, therefore, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whoever is fearful and tremble. Now, he's, he raised up first of the things this. His name was, was Gideon. God called him Jerubbabel. Mighty warrior, mighty man of God. Mighty, everybody say mighty man of God. Mighty man of God. Somebody say mighty woman of God. Mighty woman of God. Come on, ladies, say mighty woman of God. Mighty woman of God. Say, I am. I am. A mighty woman of God. A mighty woman of God. Now, men, say man of God. Man of God. Say mighty man of God. Say, I am. I am. A mighty man of God. It's the first thing God had to establish because he was fearful in a place trying to shred wheat. In, 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 a, in a covered place. When you shred wheat in the middle of everything, in the field so it can blow. But he was so scared. The Bible says the Israelites were confined to the taverns because of their sin. Because of the sin of their father. They had left God. The church is running scared because of sin. Hmm. It's time for the church to come out of the closet. Yeah. It's time for his people to make a stand. But guess what? He had a, when he first declared that he had a, what he did the night before, he went, he went down and tore up the altars. Now, here's this. He was scared. He put a fleece out to God and wanted to make sure that God was with him. First thing you got to know is that God is with you. Say, say, say God is. God is. With me. With me. Because his word says. Because his word says. He's with me. He's with me. Stop putting out fleeces. Now you have God's word. He, he, are you with me? Amen. He didn't have the New Testament. We got the New Testament. The Christ has come. We don't need to put out a fleece. Amen. Amen. So God is with us. Amen. So uh, first thing I understood it. So when he first, he made his announcement and said, okay, I'm getting ready to take this land over here that the Midians have taken. Who's with me? Everybody comes. 32,000 people come. 32,000. Can you imagine how he must have felt like, Yeah. Wouldn't you be happy if you said, who's with me and 33,000 people come? Yes. Like, Man, we're going to take this city. Pastor, we're going to take this city. But watch this. God always has a purging process. And when you tell people this, people always think that you're being cynical. No. It's all throughout. I can tell you. I can show you with Moses. I can show you with every leader in the Bible. There's always was a purging process. Watch this. Now, therefore, when you see it, therefore, you got to look at what it's. Therefore. Now, therefore. Now, therefore. Proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whoever is what? Fearful. Full of fear and trim. You're here, but you're scared. Yes. You're here, but you're scared. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to battle with scary folk. Amen. Scary folk will get you killed. Yes, they will. Scary folk be talking junk, and they can't back it up. That's true. Are you with me? Yes. You know, just careful, just be talking. You know what I'm talking about? B.C., before Christ. I think about when I want to save. There's one guy that hung with us. He was in our, in, our, in our crew, and he always was talking stuff. And we'd be like, be quiet. Yeah. Because you know you ain't backing it up. And we're going to have to fight on your behalf. Yes. Are y'all with me? Yes. Yeah, we're going to do this to you. And our crew, and mm. so we like, somebody get him. <laughs> I won't call his name because he may listen to it. Somebody get this person right here. Hmm. 
But then there was one guy that was real crazy that hung with us. He was quiet. He never made, he just started pacing. He was the crazy one. He gonna take about five people. I'd be like, calm, calm that one down, calm him down. Yeah. I'd just give him a nickname. Call Jay down, calm, calm him down. Are you with me? Yes. And then it was me, I'm just strategizing how we gonna take out everybody. Huh. Okay, get crazy over here, get all them out. <laughs> this, this guy that talk, he gonna run. <laughs> are are y'all with me? Yes. So he really, I didn't really count him. Yes. Are y'all with me? You got to understand that. Now, therefore, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whoever is fearful and trembling, let him what? Return home. Let him what? Return home. Return home and hurry away from Mount Gilead. Get, get, on, get on out of here. Because you ain't ready to fight. Now, notice this. Then 22,000 people return and 10,000 remain. Can you imagine how he must have felt? To go from 32, can you imagine? Membership of the church went down from 32,000 to 10,000. Yes. You say, well, that's still a lot, Pastor. Well, it's a lot, but it's not over yet. Yes. Are y'all with me? And the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. What? You're like, I know there's got to be God now. Yes. Still too many. Take them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. And any of one whom say to you, this one shall go with you, you shall go with you. And any one of whom I say to you, this one shall not go with you, shall not go. So he's getting ready to give him the test. Go to the next slide, please. He's trying to give him the next test. So he brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said again, everyone who laps the water with his tongue as a dog, as a, as a dog laps, you shall set by himself likewise. I know. So what he's saying is this. Everyone that comes, he probably had them do some, had to run down to the water. So by this time, they're all tired, right? Because mm -hmm. they were on the mountain, so they got to the water's where you usually where? All right, in the valley. So they had to run down. Physical training. You got to go through something. You got to run through life with them. Yes. Don't be mad when you're running through life when folk don't hang with you. Hmm. Don't be mad when you're running through life when people start talking about you. That's true. Don't be mad when you're running through life, when you start facing challenges, and you find out that the people that you thought were with you aren't really with you. Come on. Yeah. Running through life. They run to the water, the place where we're supposed to all get refreshed together. But notice, some came and they knelt like this on their fours, it says in the other verse, and they began to drink like a dog. Lost all composure. Didn't want to have room for the other person. Let me just get in. Because right here at four, you, you're taking up all the space, right? Mm -hmm. But he said, keep the ones that knelt and began to drink. Now, what's the difference between this and this? Anybody want to tell me? What? Say it louder. Come on, Jamaica, loud. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that Jamaican voice. Come on. You're more aware of what's going on. You're more aware of what's going on. Yes. Are y'all with me? I love it. I love it. <laughs> I remind. <laughs> <laughs> you're more aware. You're drinking. You're looking. You're, you're, the, you're, the, you're in preparation. You're ready for battle. You're more skilled. Yeah. You're more disciplined. Yeah. Right here. <sighs> Get out the way. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> come on in. You need to come in too? Come on. Come on. We're going to look together because any moment we may get attacked yes. and we're ready. One speaks of preparation and discipline. The other speaks of the lack of that. Mm. So success comes when opportunity meets preparation. Come on. Are you with me? Yes. So you needed that discipline. He wanted disciplined warriors around. So he says the one that laps like a dog, let him go. And the number of those who lap putting their hands to their mouth was 300 men. They went from 10,000 to 300. Now, can you imagine what that must have done to Gideon's leadership? Because hmm. you know you're always going to have some flesh detectives in the bunch, right? Yes. Can you imagine out of the 10,000, you say, okay, first we had 32,000. We went down to what? 10,000. 10, what is Gideon doing wrong? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. He's just running everybody away. You could assume that. 
Right? He just says, you that. can assume that. So I'm yeah. sure somebody says, let me, you know what, let me go start interviewing the people to find out what's going wrong. So they told you, so now we get down to 300. So I'm really got to check this out now. So let me, let me say, so he, he got rid of you because you on all fours? I don't think that's right. Mm -hmm. Don't know the whole story. But I don't think that's right. That's good. Always. You're going to always have that in the bunch. You got people that are going to meddle. This guy. Well, you're going to have people that will leave you. I don't know why I'm saying you right now. But will leave you. You know, you thought, man, thought they were with you. Mm -hmm. And then after they leave you, they ain't, ain't going to start talking about you after they leave you. Mm -hmm. And all you're trying to do is do what God told you to do. That's right. Why can't we just leave each other alone? Yes. My wife and we have this thing is when we, when we don't agree with one another, we leave each other alone. It's mm -hmm. like we have a time of time out. Yes. And in that time of time out, we're not trying to argue our point. We're asking God to show us what we did wrong. Right. So when we come together, we'll come back to say what we did wrong. Yeah. What, I'm telling her what I did wrong. She's telling me what she did, I wrong, did wrong. And we repent. Can you imagine how the body of Christ would be if people evaluated what they did wrong hmm. and not always was telling? Look, 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 look. Promise me this. Don't be a trash can for anybody. Yeah. It, may not, it may be a member of another church. And they may have left the church or whatever. You know, before you listen to all the stuff that they, they said that, that happened and what the people did to them, understand three sides. that there's always three sides to a story. Mm -hmm. His side, her side, and the, whole and the truth. truth. And the truth is right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so you got to, you it's, it's a fine line. And you can't listen and become a garbage can to what people say about someone when you don't approach them. That's sin. Right. Are y'all with me? Amen. Amen? Amen. If somebody come to me, can I use you, Maurice? Yeah. Somebody came to me about Brother Maurice and said, Brother Maurice, you know, I don't like this. He did this to me, so and so and so. First thing I'm going to do, if I must ask him, did you go to Brother Maurice? That's what you do. He said, we did. So why do you still have the problem? Well, that person, listen, I'm going to say, okay, brother, let me go get Brother Maurice. We're going to go get this straight right now. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to just continue to keep listening to you and let you get off, off of your chest. Yeah. Because then I become polluted. Faster. Why am I here today? Amen. Amen. It's no, and let me, and how many know it's no neutral? Yes. And listening to mess. Yes. Amen. You can't stay. You can't. You can't stay. You. you no. 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 You can't. No. 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 You can't stay neutral. It's no. No. When I'm counseling couples, and I, if I got the spouse with me, or if I got the, whichever one I have, and they start trying to talk to me about the other person, I said, now nah, I'm gonna have to ask them about what you they just said. Defend themselves. That's true. Because you just said this, and they're not here to defend themselves. Right. So let's talk about what you did wrong. Right. Are you with me? Two three. And so what would you know how better the church would be if we help people to what they did wrong? Mm. Mm -hmm. And if they say they didn't do anything wrong, then you, that's a check right there. And the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So if those two parties aren't there that were in that conversation, you can't establish that that's true. In the mouth of two or three witnesses that were there during that time, let every word be established. Going back to that his side, her side, and the whole truth. So you got you to be careful with that. Amen? Amen. So